Hey guys, welcome to another video. I'd like to build a workbench along this wall, but something you need for workbenches is electrical outlets. So unfortunately, in this garage, I can't tap off of the existing circuit because the 15 amp circuit is already really overloaded with the garage openers and the lights and a bunch of other things. So today I'm adding a dedicated garage circuit. Fortunately for me, right behind this wall is the basement electrical panel. So today I'm going to be adding a dedicated 20 amp circuit with a bunch of new outlets. So let's get started. Before I do any electrical work, I have to find all of the studs and mark up the wall so I know where the workbench will be. At this point, the wall is all marked up so we can start installing our boxes and running wire. I'm going to first put the box where I think I'm going to put it, and then I'm going to trace this knockout. Because I am putting in this um, clamp, I do have to cut a little bit out so I can fit this entire clamp there. Now I'm going to go and notch this out in my oscillating tool. Sweet. Now at this point I'm going to use a 5 8 inch spade bit and then drill into this opening. Now I'll just start feeding the Romex into the basement. That's my wire, and that's the panel. Unfortunately, all of the other Romex in this house is just zip tied together, and there's not really a convenient place for me to staple this down, which is what I would prefer to do. So I'm just gonna have to zip tie this and then just run it to the panel. No more knockouts at the top, so I pulled the wire down here, but it's here, so let's go ahead and knock out this knockout. I'm going to staple this cable down right outside of the box, just because. So I'm going to be removing this breaker and replacing it with a tandem. This is a lighting circuit, so it is pretty light load. If I really have to in the future, I could always just combine circuits to avoid using too many tandems. But for now, there's not a whole lot of tandems compared to other panels, so I think I'll be okay. Let's go ahead and strip this insulation. I like to start at the end and then just pull the knife forward on the sheathing where the ground is so I don't nick any wires. And after that, I just pull this all the way back. I know some people will just cut the insulation all the way down here and then just pull the whole thing off. I feel like that's kind of risky because if you somehow nick the wire, now you can't really do anything about that unless you pulled a ton of extra wire. Whereas I don't really care if I nick it at the end and when I pull it back, I know that the knife has not made contact with anything back here. Pull it until it's at the end. Always leave a little bit of sheathing, and then I'll just cut it. There we go. So I'm going to feed my ground and neutral to the back, and then the hot will stay in the front. Obviously, since I'm doing some old work, I really can't make it look any neater because it already kind of looks interesting. I'm going to go ahead and strip this Romex using the uh, 12 gauge hole. So since this is a neutral, it must go under its own terminal screw. You can't double tap these. Just tightening down the grounds at this point. At this point, we can go ahead and put in our new breaker. It just hooks up there. Make sure it's off before you plug it in and then just press. At this point, I got concerned because the breaker would not fit. The reason it wouldn't fit is because I bought the wrong type of breaker. So I bought a new CTL style breaker. This panel does not accept the newer breakers. It doesn't matter if it's a tandem or not. It just will not fit. So I needed the more expensive NCL style breaker. Back in the garage, I'm gonna cut this wire. Push this back, and then we can use a couple of deck screws to cinch this down. So my next box is going to be 23 inches above this one, so I'm going to need to cut some conduit. Just cutting this with a normal hacksaw. Going to use my deburring tool to just deburr these rough edges. 
so the wire doesn't get chafed. Now I'm gonna do my offset bend. So I'm gonna first mark it at about two and a half. And then from there, I'm gonna mark it at four and three quarters. So I'm gonna line the first mark up with the arrow and then bend this to 10 degrees. Then flip that around to the second mark. And then bend it to 10 degrees. I can kind of see that I kinked the conduit, which is not great. It actually doesn't look very good, but try to get better. At this point, let's... Unfortunately, there's no stud behind this box, so the next best thing is these toggler anchors that split apart behind the wall. So my method is to kind of just create a divot in the wall where you want your anchor to go. Carefully send these very slow. Drive them the rest of the way with a hand screwdriver because as soon as you over torque these things, they become pretty bad. And now I just drive them home until I hear that split. That's not going anywhere. Got all my conduit and boxes on the wall. You can see I did all my offsets. It looks pretty good. This actually took forever, but now I'm gonna just start pulling Romex through the conduit. First receptacle I'll install is this GFCI. Because I'm installing these in a garage, the must be GFCI protected per 2020 NEC. I'll be installing this Eaton one. It comes with a cover plate, but I'm not gonna need that. And I'm using a tamper resistant receptacle because that's also required by code. Of course, since this entire box assembly is made of metal, I will have to ground it. So I'm going to wrap one of the ground conductors around this green screw in the back. I'm going to use this exposed work cover, but to use it, I have to break off these plaster ears, so usually these would grab onto the drywall. So just for the normal receptacles, I'm going to use the splicing method or pigtailing method. So I'm basically going to wire nut these two together and then wire nut uh, some pigtails onto that so that way I can connect my outlets easier but of course because this is a grounded box or a grounded system I'm going to bond the ground to the box. These are the receptacles I'll be installing in case you want to model. They are Legrand tamper resistant 20 amp commercial receptacles. Now you might say, oh, you can use 15 amp receptacles on a 20 amp circuit. I am aware of that, but these were pretty cheap. I paid $20 for like a 10 pack. So it was a pretty good deal. So I was like, may as well just use the superior receptacle. Since these are in all metal boxes, I'm going to definitely use electrical tape around these live terminals so that when nothing accidentally makes contact with something it is not supposed to. Using an exposed work ring again, so I have to break off these ears.
gotten all of the outlets and switch boxes done, and the last thing to do is install the emergency light, which will be really simple. Since this emergency light is an ungrounded fixture, I just bonded that straight to the box. This will be the most easy termination because there's not a whole lot going on in the box, but this emergency light will not mount to a four x four square, so I need to use one of these mud rings. Nice and level, I connected the battery up. Last thing to do is just adjust these lamp heads so they actually do something, and then the entire electrical for this bench is done. Moment of truth. Nothing blew up. The job is done, power is on. You can see I have all my outlets installed. So let's go ahead and test the GFCIs. So I guess we'll use this outlet. Properly wired. Click. Emergency light is on, of course, which shows that it's working. Let's reset this. But yeah. Everything does work as intended. This switch, of course, controls the emergency light. This switch is controlling this outlet, which will eventually be used for lights. Um, but that's that. Go ahead and test this one. Well, that's that. Thank you for watching this video. I did kind of make a mess. Well, this is something you don't see often. Someone cleaning up after their electrical work and using a broom. Well, anyways, that's that. I'm really happy with this, and we can go ahead and start installing the rest of the benches now. So, yeah, thank you for watching.